Today I'm going to show you how to tie a relatively unknown fly known as the buffalo midge. It was originally developed for fly fishing in Utah, but I think that it'll work anywhere there's large midges or midge clusters. You can use any standard size 16 or 18 dry fly hook for this pattern. And I like to use Vivas 14 knot, but any black thread will work. Now I prefer Vivas for this pattern and many others because it's a little bit stronger and you'll be able to bite into materials and I feel like it locks them down a little bit better. Now once you get that thread wrap back to the hook point, you can snip or break off the tag end. Now the body of the buffalo midge is composed entirely of peacock curl. Now there's different colors of peacock curl and sometimes you can get different sizes. Get a nice looking piece of hurl that has long spiky fibers on it and lock it down to about the midway point. Now once you get there, take touching wraps forward and make it look as nice and spiky as you can. Now as you're wrapping that hurl to the midway point, you're gonna stop and lock it down with your tying thread. I'll pull the hurl to the left and give a few thread wraps so that you have that hurl hanging to the side. The other version of this fly that I've seen actually calls for buffalo hair for the wing, but buffalo hair is water absorbent, so this midge gray straight zealon from Blue Ribbon Flies accomplishes two things. One, you'll be able to see the fly, and two, this stuff floats like a cork. Once you lock it in, you can snip off the front and use it for your next one. You can then use your tying thread to cover up the butt ends of the zealon. When you've accomplished that, wrap back to the midpoint of the fly. Now this fly gets its name because it is a big, bulky midge, and if you can believe it, it actually has shoulders on it. So you're going to want to use two millimeter black craft foam and tie that little point in, and then you can cover it up, and this is where this Vivas thread works great because it really bites into the material, and you can get a nice tapered head on it. Now continue wrapping the hurl forward to create the other half of the body of the fly. Once you get that hurl tied down, you can snip off the excess. Now pull the foam forward and you can use some pretty strong thread wraps here to lock it down. And you see how it creates the shoulders of this big buffalo midge. For hackle, I once again prefer Whiting Farms Grizzly. Insert either a size 16 or 18, depending on what size hook you're using. And you're gonna tie that stem in right where your previous thread wraps were. You can snip off the extra if there is some. Lock it down. And then take two or three turns to create some nice legs on this fly. Tie that hackle down. and then pull the foam forward and take a few thread wraps before you whip finish. Now this part's a little tricky because you got a lot going on in the front of this fly, but if you're patient with it, you can get your three or four turn whip finish and then snip or break off your tying thread. You can then get in there with your tying scissors and snip off the hackle 
but you can also use for the next one. And then you want to cut that craft foam down so that there is a little bit of a head sticking out. But that's it. You can then get in there and snip off the wing. I like to keep it about the length of the hook shank. And that is the buffalo midge. Now I feel like this fly will work where there's big midges and in Colorado, March is typically when the big spring midge starts to come off and I saw some last weekend. But also I feel like if you're on a spring creek in the summertime and you throw this fly out there, it represents an ant, it represents a beetle, and I think the fish are gonna oblige very nicely. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Feel free to check out my other videos and tight lines.